us a get better at FC24. Join the Neil Guides Patreon. What's going on, boys? Welcome back to the series where we go through every single tactic and I explain to you the benefits and the best tactics for each one and how they compare to other formations inside the game. We have the 442. Now, the 442, you might have seen my video on the 4222. The 4222 and the 442 are quite similar in the way that they play. In fact, there isn't really much difference apart from one thing, and that's the fact that you have CDMs. Um, the cams are very relatable to a left mid and right mid in a regular 442. Um, in fact, the wide cams, people always get this confused. They actually play as wingers. Um, but in the 442 flat, um, you essentially have the lack of CDMs. Now, there's two benefits of this. This is more of an attacking variation. The benefit of this is that when your team sit higher, it's better for pressing. With your CDM sitting deeper, the most important thing you do have is an instruction, cut passing lane. That is the bit of the cheat code that can really help you be defensively more stable. So if you're a player that naturally struggles to be defensive, or you find yourself to get counter-attacked, the 4 triple 2 is what I'd recommend because the CDMs, these players here, you can put them on, for example, cut passing lanes, and they will just naturally, that's just two attackers, your CDM will shift in between them and cut the passing lane out. That's the benefit. So it's kind of like AI defensive assistance in your favor. And that is why the 4 triple 2 rules over the 4 2 But there is one thing and one reason why the 4 2 is better. And that comes down to something which is probably more on the pro scene that you would see. Is that the center mids, they sit higher. And naturally, you can press better with the 4-4-2 and that should be more attacking. A lot of pro players like to play with one centre mid on get forward, especially around this time of the year, you can go with a player that's high, high work rates or technical sprint or technical dribbling and push the ball going forward. That is why the 4-4-2 in its general play style is better than the 4 4 because you sit higher. Now for pressing, I love this formation. I think this along with the 4 4 is the best formation for pressing inside the game. Um, the sitting higher naturally helps you win the ball back. So although on the defensive end, you may lack the CDMs without the ball, when your opponent's got the ball out of possession, you can press the ball very, very well. There's another benefit as well is let's say you're trying to recycle the ball. Let's say, for example, you're outside the box. And let's say, for example, you're here. The CDMs in the 4 2 they sit deeper. In the 4 2 they sit more closer to the strikers towards the box. If you want to recycle the ball from the wing and then go back to the edge of the box and then bring the ball back forward, it's better to use this formation as opposed to a 4 2 And that is why it's more attacking. Now, generally speaking, I'm going to go through the instructions, what I'd recommend first, um, as opposed to um, the tactics, because instructions are more important. Uh, especially in a setup like this, because since tactics are more of the same. Um, I always go with stay central. Now, contrary to belief, back in FIFA 19, um, they nerfed, sorry, FIFA 20, they nerfed how far these defenders can come back. So even if you put them on comeback and offense, all the players won't be behind the ball. And that's the problem. With This is why this formation is hard to play, because you need these players to be behind the ball. But in FIFA 20, People used to play the 4-4-2 and these strikers, when I'll come back in the fence, they used to be outside the box. What I mean by that is if I go, for example, like here, they would literally be like this. This would be a 4-4-2 line like this. And your strikers were here. So they patched it now. So your strikers are on the yellow zone. So they move from red to yellow. So that is now how your strikers are on a 4-4-2. Even if you put come back in the fence on the players, they just go a little bit further back. Not even that, maybe something like this. So putting the strikers on comeback and offense doesn't necessarily make a difference. It's almost like stay forward. So comeback and offense doesn't work with this formation. And that is why if you try to put a comeback and offense, they don't change position. Now, what's more important here is comeback and offense, they just sit a bit deeper, but allows you to have everyone behind the ball, allows you to press. The big mistake I see is people like to put all these four players on stay forward doesn't necessarily help you. Don't forget when you are pressing, you want your players to be behind the ball. Now, I normally go for stay central, get in behind. And then I also go with, um, over here, so you can put the camera back on actually, because I thought it was going away. But get in behind, stay central, and come back on the fence for both of them. Although this doesn't do anything, I'd rather just have them a little bit further back than forward. Stay central, so they stay in the middle, and get it behind, so they make the runs. The left mid and right mid, I always put them and come back in the fence, get it behind, and get into the box for a cross. This means that when you defend, 
they're going to help you come back. That way you have a 2v2 if your opponent has a left back or a right back overlapping. You've got a 2v2 on the wing. Get it behind. Pretty self-explanatory. They're going to get forward. Make those runs in behind when you win the ball. And then get into the box for a cross. When in a crossing situation, um, those players on the opposite side will get into the box. Um, I don't like to put stay wide, free roam and cut inside. Just because it forces the players to do those movements. If I want to use stay wide, I can always put a play on uh, hug the sidelines. If I want to use free roam, which it doesn't really do anything, um, especially when you have them um, on the 4-4-2 with the two strikes and the stay central, they do basically nothing. And in cut inside, they always cut inside every time. And you don't always want that. Sometimes you want width. Um, so CDMs, I put one of them on stay back cover center. The other one on a cover center and balance. So ideally, the most attacking player. This will make the third player the late run inside the box. That's why you see a lot of top tier pro players, they defend in the 4-3-2-1. Sorry, they attack in a 4-3-2-1. Even though they use that formation, they actually make it defend in a 4-4-2. Why? Because 4-4-2 is the best formation for pressing. You cover every aspect of the pitch. In a 4-3-3, for example, although you get more midfielders, sometimes you get outnumbered on the wing because you need two strikers to kind of go because if your opponent has the board one center back they can just keep lobbing the ball between the four center backs but if you've got two strikers you have basically a four versus four so your opponent's four defenders up against your four attackers so that four 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 v four can only be made with a four two four 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 two four two four 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 two four triple two and four four two second variations any formation where it's got basically a four four two structure um left back and right back are always go with stay back um i don't think there's really a point pushing them to get kind of come forward i feel like you already got the left mid and right mid there for width and when you have the left mid and right mid there i feel like the right backs they just go there and they don't really do anything. These players, they naturally get it, get into the box for a cross. Uh, but apart from that, they don't do anything else out of the ordinary. I don't think it really helps your attack so much. I'd always rather trigger these players myself. Uh, for the defensive style, you could go with a balance. Um, if you want to be aggressive, a pressure on heavy touch is really what I like to use. But with this game and this meta this year, I think you can use balance and 70 depth, to be completely honest. Um, the width... I would normally go to around about 40. Typically speaking, because the 4-4-2 is quite a naturally a wide formation, you don't want to be any wider. When you want to press, you want to be as wide as possible, but not too wide. And I think when you use constant pressure, the players automatically kind of fan out in different directions. Anyway, so 70, you can use pressure on every touch, um, um, or you can use pressure to possession loss and 60 depth, or you can use balance and 71 depth. Similar to what I said with the 4 4 a uh, four triple two, should I say? Four four two. The base you play the same way. But a play, you can play balanced. You can even use long ball. But I would definitely not recommend slow build up play. I think that's what kills the formation. This is a formation to be aggressive on the front foot to apply pressure, to be aggressive and to win the ball back. You don't want your team to be building up slowly when you're trying to attack. Um, and then the chance creation. Personally speaking, I would like something like balanced. It's a bit too slow, it's a bit too diet, it's a bit too passive. I find that I, my team just tired himself out. It's a bit dire in attack. Whereas forward runs, I find that players make the best runs, either forward runs or direct passing. You can use, I would recommend forward runs. People just use direct passing because everyone else does, but I think forward runs is better. With similar to the 4 triple 2 around 45, 40. You can even go towards the 35 region as well. Um, it depends on how much distance you want between the team. That's what width is really referring to here. Um, but again, you could even use one width just to be a bit more narrow. But I like to have a wider width. And therefore, I got my left back and right backs. Um, sorry, my left wing and right wing pinning my opponent's left back and right backs and making that 4 2 structures and corners and free kicks however you want. And that is the 4 2 custom tactics and structures. Don't forget, this is an attacking variation. If I really want the four backs to go forward, I trigger them myself. This is an attacking variation where you're not going to be caught in behind. This is not all out attack. This is attacking formation. Losing 2-0, this is the formation of play. In fact, if you know that I have my 4-2-4 ultra attacking setup, it's very, very similar. The 4-4-2 and the 4-2-4 are very, very similar. I think the 4-2-4 is better because you've got wingers as opposed to left mid, right mids. But I'll say the 4-4-2 is a bit more balanced in that perspective. So it's a balanced pressing formation. If you had to give a number between 1 being ultra defensive and 10 being ultra attacking, this would be like a 6.5 or a 7. You're not going into gung-ho territory, but nor are you going into a very, very balanced where you're sitting back and also attacking like a 4-2-3-1. 
this is like a 4-2-3-1 with an extra striker. That's the way that I see it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want to get better at 24 and come to my Patreon series, patreon.com forward slash no guys. Link down in the description. Don't get better after one month. We will refund your money. That's a no guys guarantee. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. And I'll catch you next time. Peace out.